What's up guys, Vexen here, and today I'll be teaching you the best and most optimal settings for Rainbow Six Siege in 2023. Starting off in general, there's only four things here that you need to take note of. The first and foremost thing is ping. Make sure you have your ping on. Uh, this is going to show you the, the yellow pings in game. I've had this off before. It is a nightmare <laughs> um, because you don't know if your teammates are pinging and then you blame your teammates for for being brain dead but you're actually the one brain dead because you had it off accidentally because for whatever reason when siege updates sometimes it likes to set all your settings to default on is not the default it is off don't ask me why it's siege next up is going to be drone after prep you're gonna want that manual uh, that is going to be because when it's on manual you can kind of drone after the prep phase like just concurrently and congruently so you, just, you don't get off your drone and then get back on you're just always on your drone this is really 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 good we, we like this this is because you can kind of spot spawn peaks easier you can also kind of allow your entry fraggers to get in the building and take map control faster because you are in a position to give them information directly and unfiltered there's no like oh i have to get off my drone i have to get back on my drone and that's really good you're gonna want to do that it's pretty strong would recommend outside of that the other two things cross play matchmaking i would consider on just makes for faster queue times which is a good thing in siege and then outside of that the last and foremost thing is going to be cycle inside camera groups that means instead of going like one to nine of the cameras like let's say cameras are like group one to like four which are the default cams i just press like, i want to go to the default cams or i want to go to the maestro cams or the echo cams it just allows you to kind of uh, go through all of like the camera and all the information things that you have so it's pretty good would recommend doing that just makes things slightly faster and easier i'm kind of just used to pressing the key on my keyboard to get to the cam so i don't have that issue anymore um but if you do want this it's i know it's pretty good for console i know console players like it a lot uh, on pc it gets a less use but you can still use it and then one last teeny tiny thing match replay i recommend having this on just because if someone's cheating on pc you'd be like ah he's, he's cheating you, you can go prove it um but you don't have to have it on i i can impact the performance of the game slightly because uh, it uses a little bit more ram if you're on pc but it's it's near intangible and non-noticeable so just don't worry about it next up is on hud just put everything to normal there's no reason to change anything here honestly don't even touch hud just make sure your compass is on and then other things are on as well because sometimes they're, they're, they're not on which is frustrating but yeah just yeah just yeah make sure make, make sure you have make sure you have just hide normal don't change anything next up is on audio so first and foremost make sure your audio input device is your microphone like this this right here and then your audio output device is your earbuds um which i i don't have uh in, in my ears right now because i'm recording the video uh but yeah that's what you're gonna want to do you want to have that there it's, it's pretty pretty good and would recommend outside of that um you have your dynamic range uh this is honestly only gonna matter for people who have like decent headsets uh if you have a pretty decent headset think astros or odyssey on console and if you have iems just iems in general uh, on pc put your dynamic range to hi-fi this is going to be the most accurate sound reproduction um, and representation outside of that i would consider doing night mode the reason why i consider doing night mode is everything's a little bit more compressed but with everything being more compressed and more kind of tightly bunched up what you do get is you get in my opinion better directional audio yes it's not as dynamic yes it's not as full or clear but because there are less things going on there are less things for the game to screw up therefore you are kind of getting a better directional experience i like it for that reason especially i don't know why sound this season is really bad it's, it's some of the worst it's ever been um i find that tv mode is, is is actually a decent middle ground between the two but i think note mode is definitively the best directional experience and hi-fi is the best sound in the game you can get which the game can sound great if the sound works and the guy is is who's who's not below me is is in front of me but i think he's below me because he, the sound of him at walking right is going through a hole and it's bouncing it's bad you you get it directionally use my mode uh, middle ground use tv but i really just recommend not using tv and then if you have a high-end uh iems or a high-end headset that is hi-fi certified use hi-fi next up is display for display here is what i'm running you're going to want to make sure your refresh rate is the highest if you're on console and using a monitor make sure you set it to 120 i believe the ps5 and the xbox series x have 120 capability for siege uh your aspect ratio i run mine on 32 this is going to stretch things out a little bit some of these aspect ratios are going to stretch things out and this is a good thing uh, because you can easily see people so that, that's good. The, the downside is things move kind of faster across your screen. It's just how it looks. It's a it's a visual thing. Um, there are much better videos that explain specifically aspect ratio and stretch resolution. Um, but I'm playing on 3.2. 3.2 is slightly more stretched than 16.9, which is the default. But it is not crazy like 4.3 or 5.4, which is the absolute craziest. Uh, outside that, you have black bars, which is 16.10 and 21 by 9. Um, though you're you know, you're probably not going to be using that in most cases. V-Sync is off. V-Sync kind of just locks your frame rate to like 60 to 120. Um, so don't use it. Also does kind of have some input latency. So would not want to use that at all. If possible, I have my FPS limit off. In some cases, if you're on a lower end system or if you're having stuttering and rendering issues, make sure you just like lock your FPS to your refresh rate. That's good. 
So your refresh rate is your monitor. So it's, you know, how many cycles it's doing per second. Um, your FPS different than that. So my refresh rate is 175, but in game I'm getting 300 frames because I have a 4090. So I'm, I'm getting all these frames. So I'm just making more frames. Um, but that can be an issue where you make too many frames or if you're not making enough frames, you're not like keeping the same amount of like FPS as your like, like refresh rate. Just lock it one to one if you're having any issues. That will solve a decent amount of problems, uh, such as tearing and some other things and some other performance based things with your graphics card. So keep that in mind. So this is widescreen letterbox that don't have this on it. It's useless. Um, HUD area, I just have an 80 and 80. Uh, no reason to have them larger. Um, it just makes things easier to see. It, I can see my information more condensed um, because it's easier when it's maxed out. It goes to the edges of the screen, making it a little bit more difficult to kind of uh, get information correctly. And then brightness, I just have mine on sufficiently bright, which is 65. Um, this is because I can see things in dark areas and just makes the game overall more appealing to look at. Next up is the graphics tab. So uh, I have NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Off. I know most people have it on. I, I get it. I'm a content creator. I use NVIDIA and VEC encoding. And when I have it on, I ran into some very strange issues. That being said, in most cases, you're going to want to run this on. It's less system input delay. It's overall, it's just, it's just better. Just, just turn it on and it impacts your frames so marginally that it doesn't matter. I was having issues because I had this on, plus I'm encoding like two streams and recording simultaneously. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's... That's why I put it on. Next up, latency flash indicator. Just have this on. It's decent to have on. Just no reason not to. Now, I have everything kind of mixed. So my texture quality is high. High textures are good. If your PC is having issues with frame rate and stability, run lower things. And in some cases, lower things are making things easier to see. Here's a downside of that. If I'm running a low texture quality and someone has a skin that blends into a wall, well, if the wall is low quality and the skin is low quality, it's actually going to be harder to see because they just blend in together more. At a higher quality, yeah, that they're higher quality and it's taking more frames, I can actually more easily discern the skin from the wall because they're higher quality textures and therefore they're more fidelity. They're, I, can, I can see it better. Next up is texture filtering. Uh, this just makes things like easier to see, uh, sharper edges, stuff like that. Also, linear is the least impact on my, my PC. So again, if you have a lower end PC, run linear. You're going to have, again, the fastest thing, uh, which is good because that's less demanding on your system. It just calculates things fast. It's not the best, right? It's not as good as like times 16, but it is going to have less impact on your system and you're going to have more frames because of it. Next up is LOD quality. So this is how far things are rendered. I have mine on ultra and it's actually better if you have this on low. You're going to want this on low. I have it on ultra because I can and I prefer having it so I can see objects at a further distance. Next to shading quality. Again, the lower, the better here. I'm running on high because I like seeing my gun skins and the, the game and how the, the, they wanted the game to look. Um, next up is shadow quality. Shadow quality is one of the only options that you're going to want on high or at least medium. This way you can see shadows rendered in real time. When I mean shadows rendered in real time, I mean player shadows. So if someone's swinging, you can actually see their shadow before you can see them. So you can kind of pre-fire and it can help you win that gunfight. I have reflection quality on high. There's no reason to have this on high. This is just reflective things on the map. Uh, honestly, you're going to want this on low in most cases. Next up, I have VFX quality on low. So this is um, actually something that you're definitely going to want on low. So this is things like smokes, like debris. Uh, when someone blows up a C4 and there's like, that puff of smoke and that fire, uh, this reduces most of that. Uh, and when there's a smoke, it's, it's actually kind of easier to see potentially around the smoke and see things through the smoke. If anyone's actually like walking inside the smoke, it's just easier to see. Uh, if it's on high, it, it makes it more dense, more volumetric. And then also uh, when things are blown up, when things are like destroyed, um, there, there is more oomph to it, which can impact your system and cause crashes. If your system is low end and you have it on super high, um, that reason I have mine on low. Also, just better for frames. For ambient inclusion, I just have it off. No reason to have it on. Next up for lens effects, I have Bloom plus Lens Fair on. Uh, that's because I like the look of it. I would highly recommend having this off as this can be distracting. And not only can this be distracting, uh, this also impacts performance very minorly, just a little bit. But again, every frame matters in a competitive FPS. Next is zoom in depth field. I have this off. Most people actually have this on because it's less distracting because what it does is basically removes like when you're aimed in, like the, the field of view stuff, just kind of like compresses it a little bit um in terms of image quality so you can focus more on what's in front of you next up is dlss if you're running this game at like 8k or 4k this can be useful this is uh, nvidia uh, the deep learning stuff it's, it's good it, it's decent stuff uh i personally am not running it because i, I don't need to I, I can just kind of shoot through the frames and have no issue uh that being said if you have a bad system or if you're running this on a super high resolution this can be useful to make up some of those frames I have anti-aliasing off. This also gives kind of harder, more like defined edges to things. I just like the look of that personally. Is it is it a good thing? I, I don't know. I just, I just like the look of it. That, that's personally me. If you want smooth, more rounded edges, then this is where you're going to want to use um, any of these things like TAA, uh, 2X, DLSS, FXAA, any of those. 
Uh, I will say this is going to impact performance again, just a, just a tiny bit, not 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 a crazy amount. But if you do have all these things like maxed out, then like those tiny like, performance hits are going to add up quite profoundly, and that's going to impact your system in, in a relatively negative way, and also impact your experience in a relatively negative way. Next up for controls, the only thing that you need controls is honestly a uh, drone and gadget uh, advanced. This allows you to pull out and use your gadget and drone without actually using it, so I can throw my drone without getting on it automatically. And uh, for my gadget, I can bring it out with also using it automatically in most cases. So I just would recommend doing that. Basically uh, allows you to kind of dictate their behaviors yourself rather than having the game dictate those behaviors for you. I nearly everyone should have that uh, here. And then basically most, if not all of the other preferences are the ones that you, you again, it's, it's per person. Like it's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, I'm of the opinion that mouse control should be disabled. You should just use your number of keys or whatever to switch. Console's Y. Uh, and then outside of that, for a console don't have a controller so I, I can't really tell you what the best is for the controller uh that being said these are kind of my settings the settings that i run the settings that i would recommend especially in the graphics category and if you want one extra little tip uh make sure that your drivers are up to date if your drivers are not up to date you can experience some performance degradation uh, and vice versa if your drivers are up to date and you're noticing kind of an l in your performance or a, a reduction in, in, in a noticeable way uh maybe right, just kind of scroll back um some of those issues that you were having and then that, that, that could be pretty good um, so yeah, it's been vaccine guys. This is my definitive settings guide for 2023. Basically just run these settings for all of eternity. Honestly, nothing is going to change crazily unless they update the engine and update the interface and the API, which I, I don't think they're going to do because uh, this game shipped with Vulcan. So there's no reason to have a, like, a new like uh, graphics API. Uh, that being said, yep, these are the settings. If you like this video, hey, click like uh, more videos coming soon. Potentially a more in-depth settings guide as well if you want.